Electricity from a nuclear reactor doesn't come directly from the uranium. The, ra the uranium actually undergoes nuclear fission to produce lots of heat. Depending on which power plant you're at, the heat can be used in different ways. In older reactors, the heat is used to boil tons of water every day. That water turns into steam, which spins massive turbines. To have a nuclear reactor, you need some uranium-235 rods and some boron control rods so the uranium doesn't go into a runaway nuclear chain reaction. You also need a massive and reliable water source. The water has two jobs. It serves as a coolant for the reactor so everything doesn't melt through the floor, and it serves as the thing that actually provides the propulsion for the massive turbines that can then turn that propulsion into electricity. One advantage of nuclear power is it is the most efficient power source that we can control. It produces more energy per gram than any other source on Earth. It is about 8,000 times more efficient than coal power. And it's cleaner, too. Another advantage is that you can use nuclear power in many different ways. We have used nuclear power to power spacecraft like Mars rovers and even the Voyager. A disadvantage is that since uranium has all that power, it can be used in huge bombs. Another disadvantage of nuclear power is that even when people are trying to use it safely, things can go poorly. With a nuclear chain reaction being used to create heat, things can run out of control pretty quickly. If things get too hot, you can lose control and end up melting things. There is a big list of things that you don't want to happen inside a nuclear reactor, but I think that having core components of the reactor begin to melt is one of the highest things on that list. All nuclear reactors have procedures in place to prevent meltdowns. They often had the uranium rods held inside the chamber, and if things went south, they would just let the uranium rods fall out. Every nuclear power plant has a backup emergency coolant system as well. If you are ever near a power plant that is having a meltdown, you should try to get inside a huge, thick, concrete building. The concrete stops all types of radiation. When a nuclear power plant is done with items that they have used, they become nuclear waste. Unfortunately, you can't just throw away uranium fuel rods. Every item down to the gloves of the hazmat suits need to be thrown away in a very special way. Most toxic waste is mixed in many layers of concrete and stored at special government regulated sites. The closest reactor to St. Louis is the Callaway plant about 110 miles away. It shouldn't ever pose a threat to St. Louis, but if there is a meltdown, you better hope that the weather doesn't carry all that radioactive air and smoke over to St. Louis. If there is a storm over the power plant as it's having a meltdown, it could carry all that radioactive material in the direction that the storm is traveling. Even though all nuclear power plants nowadays have many safeguards in place to prevent meltdowns like Chernobyl, there are still things that can happen in just the wrong place at just the wrong time to cause problems. Just in 2011, there was a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, which caused a tsunami to hit a nuclear power plant in Fukushima. Thanks to the safeguards, the power plant started to shut down all its systems. Unfortunately, though, it can be very hard to stop a nuclear chain reaction, so the uranium kept producing heat even after everything had been switched off. Due to everything being switched off, the coolant system wasn't working, and they couldn't get it back online because the backup generators were flooded with water from the tsunami. To prevent a catastrophic meltdown, like what happened in Chernobyl, they were forced to vent all the radioactive heat and steam into the atmosphere. Thankfully, that saved the reactor from going to a complete meltdown, but all that radioactive material was picked up by the weather and spread everywhere. Many people are still suffering from cancer caused by that reactor to this day. Now, I have mentioned quite a bit about Chernobyl. It is one of the worst nuclear accidents in history. In short, Chernobyl shouldn't have ever had a nuclear meltdown, especially to the extent that it did. When they built Chernobyl, they cut corners. It wasn't built with safety in mind. On top of that, it wasn't managed by people that cared for the safety of their workers. Unlike Fukushima, where they had a very good reason to be almost having a meltdown due to earthquakes and tsunamis, the only reason Chernobyl had a meltdown was due to an experiment. One day, the people in charge looked at the reactor and said, what if we take away all the safety? And so that's what they did. 
they turned off all the safety equipment, including all the backup safety equipment, and let the reactor run wild at 7% power. Unfortunately, that was enough. Thanks to the fact that they cut corners when they originally built the reactor, it was easy to get a runaway chain reaction started. After they finished their experiment, they turned on all the safety systems and realized their horrible mistake. Even with this coolant system on full blast, the core was still heating up faster than they could cool it down. Remember what I mentioned earlier about how in emergency situations reactors have a way to let the uranium rods fall out of the chamber? Well, they initiated that emergency system, but the rods didn't fall out of the chamber because they had gotten so hot that they bent. The rods were stuck in the chamber, and they were just getting hotter and hotter. There was nothing they could do to stop it. Eventually, it got so hot that when it was boiling water from the coolant system, the water wasn't just boiling, it was separating the hydrogen from the oxygen atoms, essentially creating a bomb. The inner part of the core built up more and more pressure until it eventually cracked, spewing a fireball of extremely radioactive plasma everywhere. The explosion was estimated to have a power of about 225 tons of TNT. After the explosion, the uranium and graphite was a ball of molten metal that was so hot that it started sinking through the floor. It ended up in the basement, where it is still to this day. Now, that was one of the worst nuclear accidents in history. It took a lot of incompetence to allow that to happen, so you don't have to worry about something like that happening again. The long-term effects of Chernobyl have affected areas around it to become a radioactive wasteland. On another note, there was another meltdown that happened in 1979 on Three Mile Island. There was a coolant system malfunction that ended up causing one of the reactors to slightly melt before they were able to get things under control. There weren't ever any horrible consequences, and most things weren't ever radiated past the point of safety. Unfortunately, it completely ruined the reactor, and they had to permanently shut it down. They encased the reactor in a tomb of concrete and shipped it off to a toxic waste site in Idaho. In conclusion, these were some of the worst nuclear accidents in history. As of today, there are so many safeguards in place that you shouldn't ever have to worry about a nuclear meltdown. It would take a series of just the wrong things happening in just the wrong places at just the wrong times for anything bad to ever happen.